Okay, so today we're going to learn how to filter out uh, duplicate entries in a string array. So we're going to start by creating a new BI. We're going to go to the block diagram. We're going to make this full screen and we're going to use the variant app palette today. So the VI that we need is a set variant uh, attribute and it allows you to change or create an attribute and value for variant data. So the variant data we're going to be working with is actually a variant constant. So this is an empty variant. Um, uh, feel free to pause the video and search up what a variant is in LabVIEW. Um, so we're going to wire an error in and an error out. In this case, this is because this will serve as a uh, sub VI. So we need to create these inputs and outputs uh, for the VI. Otherwise, um, you could just wire the error from previous logic. So here we're going to need um, to put this logic in a for loop. Uh, and this is because um, the set variant attribute only accepts the addition or changing of one element at a time. So in this particular case, let's go ahead and um, create an array of strings. So this is going to be on our, our and then changes to control. So this is going to be our uh, string array in. So this is going to be the array that you feed in uh, from other parts of your logic. And let's just wire this right there. So we're going to go ahead and do this, um, connect it. And basically, if you're not familiar with uh, the LabVIEW concept for a for loop, um, when it's solid, uh, that means that it's just picking the first, and in this case, only element. When it has uh, this little icon like this, it means it's auto indexed. And that means that uh, instead of you defining how many loops to count, it takes the size of the array and automatically fills this number of loop um, iterations for you, um, which can be useful. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say uh, the name of the data is going to be just the name of the element. And because we're really not giving it uh, real data, we're going to say the value is the name as well. So we're just doing that to satisfy the required uh, input for the value. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually wire that to the side. Now at this point, uh, because we're operating in a loop, uh, at this at this point, at the beginning of the loop, you're going to be getting the same empty variant uh, in. So because and, and what you're going to be doing is you're, you're going to be creating multiple, uh, actually, the same size as your array uh, variant. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually change this. So we're going to right click on that and we're going to replace it with a shift register. And then we need to select what the other side of the shift register is. In this case, it's going to be this input. And what that will do is it'll allow us uh, to pass this variant in between loop iterations and keep adding to it instead of creating n size um, variants. So basically what will happen is in the first iteration, we have an empty variant. We add a variant attribute, which is just going to be the first element in your array, and then we're going to pass it along. And then on the next iteration, we have not an empty or a variant anymore. We have a variant with one attribute and so on and so on for the whole size of the array. And so what we're going to do is at this point, uh, we've created a variant. And once you finish looping, the variant out here will be um, without duplicates because uh, variants don't uh, variant attributes don't allow you to add a duplicate element. So when you do add a duplicate element, it's basically ignored. Um, for all intents and purposes, what actually happens is you just replace the data uh, with the new set of data. But because we set the data to be the same name as um, your element, really, uh, we effectively are just ignoring um, uh, the duplicate. And so what we do at the very end is we say, we're going to get variant attributes. So this is um, this is going to allow us to uh, get all of the entries in a variant, uh, but it can also al allow you to, um, to search up an element and get its data. So if you leave name unwired and uh, then what will happen is it'll automatically return all of the names. So feel free to, to go to detailed help um, and really look at how this works. But basically what get variant attribute does is you give it a name and or you also give it 
a default value. And then if it finds it, it'll return that uh, name and the value. So this will change. So for example, right now it says unwired. So it says names and values. But let's go ahead and let's say that we were to just as a proof of concept, write um, ASDF. You can see that this changes to found and value. So basically, if you actually input a, a string to say, I want to look for entry number one, for example, right, that maybe that's your string, then it'll look in your variant. And if it finds it, this will be a true. And then it'll give you the value, even if it's an empty variant or whatever you defined here when you set it. Uh, we don't care about that right now. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to clean up that broken wire. Um, so let's just add a little bit of documentation. So let's do visible items sub diagram label, um, remove duplicates. And then what we're going to do is because we only really care about the names, we're going to create an indicator and then, um, and then we're going to write str array, no, no duplicates. So this might not be, uh, the best way to name this, uh, but we're going to leave it like this for the moment, uh, just because this is a proof of concept in your application. Feel free to make these names more meaningful or more applicable to what you actually care about. Um, we're just going to make sure this is clean. And then, like we always do, um, we're going to wire the terminal uh, with the input and output. And then here as well, this is the input, this is the output. Uh, we're going to go ahead and very, very quickly make a, so it's going to be str for string, and then we're going to write filter str array. So, and then we're going to align it in the center. And basically what this allows us to do is just filter out, um, And then let's just at least loosely try to arrange these so that they're in a similar location as the inputs and outputs of your actual thing. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to save this as LabVIEW. Let's save this as LabVIEW number three. And let's do remove duplicate. STR array. So now that we have this ready, um, I won't uh, I won't bother you with uh, adding extra uh, documentation in this video. Uh, but please refer to the previous videos on how to create APIs and follow all the relevant steps for creating um, and documenting your code. So now we're going to go ahead and just demonstrate um, how this will work. So let's go ahead and create a string array like we did previously, and this is going to be our test string. So, and let's change that actually to a control. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drag, uh, we're going to drag our API in, and then we're going to do and create an indicator. And this will just allow us to feed in a test array and then immediately be able to see how this works. So let's go ahead and just leave this kind of uh, sloppy in terms of coding. Uh, but this is a proof of concept, so I want to save the time of actually cleaning it up. So we're going to go ahead and um, size. Uh, nope, actually, we're going to we're going to click on this. We're going to do. We're going to make sure that we can feed multiple elements in. Let's just make sure the indicator is big enough so we can see our full text. So let's do A, B, C, D. So in this case, you'd expect because there's no d duplicates, we return uh, no duplicates. Um, now let's say we add an A. We would expect there to not be uh, two A's returned. And so when we run this, that's what we see. So let's do a couple of different um, variations just so we can see that even if we add more, they're more complicated. Um, let's actually just add a couple extra word, uh, extra letters, so ERT, so just random words that don't really make sense, but but just as a proof of concept so that we can see that they're actually not duplicated. So you can see, again, GERT um, 
is only entered once, the GIOP is only entered once, and every other letter is only entered once. So this is a good way to clean up if you have duplicates, if you, are, if you just want to remove and get really um, the unique elements. And the other benefit is that this is actually uh, a very fast lookup time. Uh, in other programming languages, uh, similar to HashMap, you might get big O notation of one. Uh, and in this particular case, you can expect uh, very, very fast um, search up times. Uh, we'll, we'll save the benchmarking for another video um, because benchmarking is a whole topic in and of itself. Uh, but um, feel free to try to benchmark on your own and see that this uh, implementation is a very, very fast way to eliminate duplicates in a string array um, instead of doing linear searches and uh, and so forth. So. Um, yeah, and feel free to play around. Uh, this is variant attributes are actually very powerful for um, searching up values as well. If you want to store real data and not just um, and not just filter out string arrays, you can also actually put values in and then have a fast lookup for your unique data, uh, whatever that might look like. Um, so it, it's a very very powerful tool. So play around with it, learn. Uh, and if you have any comments or any suggestions for future videos uh, of how to work with variants or any other topic, please feel free to leave comments.